My name is Robert Hastings. I am going to be the keynote speaker at the 2016 MUFON Symposium in Orlando, Florida in late August. For the past 43 years, I have sought out and interviewed U.S. military veterans regarding their involvement in UFO activity at nuclear weapons sites. These individuals, ranging from the rank of colonel to airmen, have described incidents where UFOs have not only hovered above our nuclear missile sites, but have, in, in, fa in fact, on some occasions, interfered with the functionality of those weapons. I have over 150 sources at this point, veterans who were involved in these incidents in one capacity or another. Further, declassified U.S. government documents confirm that UFO incursions at nuclear weapons sites extend back to the late 1940s. UFOs have appeared at nuclear weapons laboratories such as Los Alamos, Sandia, Oak Ridge, and other facilities. Uh, they have hovered above plutonium production sites such as the Hanford site in Washington State. It's clear from the descriptions provided both in the documents and the witness testimony that these objects are not conventional aircraft. They're described most in most cases as saucer shaped or cylindrical or spherical. They're luminous. They are capable of both high velocity flight and hovering. Again, clearly not conventional aircraft. In my opinion, this development over the course of several decades is tremendously important. Uh, the fact that UFOs, whatever they are, wherever they're from, whoever they're piloted by, have expressed an interest, an ongoing, widespread, and long-standing interest in our nuclear weapons systems is certainly significant and worthy of public attention. Over the past uh, three decades or so, I have spoken at over 500 colleges and universities in an effort to bring this information to the public's attention. In September of 2010, I also held a press conference in Washington, D.C., which CNN streamed live. That press conference is available, uh, the video of it, at my website, ufohastings.com. At that press conference, seven U.S. military veterans all described their involvement in one or more nuclear weapons-related UFO incidents. The most uh, spectacular cases involve incidents in which UFOs apparently not only shut down missiles, make them inoperative, requiring maintenance before they become operative again, but other incidents involving missile activations, which seem to be even more terrifying than the shutdown incidents. Uh, the witnesses who have described these incidents say that UFOs have apparently caused missiles to go into countdown mode, that is, are preparing to launch. Uh, quite evidently, this is extremely terrifying uh, to the individuals who are involved in these incidents. There are documents from the former Soviet Union uh, secured by investigative reporter George Knapp indicating that these kind of missile activation incidents also occurred in the former Soviet Union. So quite clearly, whoever are flying these craft are playing an even-handed game. They are not only monitoring and disrupting American nuclear missiles, but Soviet nuclear missiles. I am aware of UFO activity at American missile sites as recently as 2013. Uh, that information is still classified quite obviously, and yet the sources for it are credible and reliable. In short, this is an ongoing situation. I presume that the same thing is occurring in the former Soviet Union, now Russia, but it would be very difficult to get information from that still very secretive country. In any case, it's clear to me, and I think virtually everyone who I present my information to in articles, my book, my now released documentary film, and in articles I've written for my website, that this is a very real and tremendously important situation. I believe that the American public and indeed everyone in the world has a right to know the facts 
and I have attempted as best as possible to ferret out those facts and present credible sources of information which substantiate the information that I am presenting to the public. In March 1967, I was present at Malmstrom Air Force Base. My dad was Career Air Force. That was and still is a nuclear missile base in Montana. Rumors were circulating about UFO activity at missile sites. I was really not in a position to follow up on that information as I was still a teenager, but over the years, those rumors have proven to be true. And in subsequent decades, other people with a knowledge of these incidents have come forward. For example, uh, well-known UFO researcher Raymond Fowler, who at the time of these incidents worked for the Sylvania Corporation as the Minuteman Project Supervisor. Uh, in a book he wrote in 1974 called UFO Interplanetary Visitors, he indicated for the first time publicly, as, as far as I'm aware, that UFOs had interfered with the functionality of nuclear missiles at Malmstrom Air Force Base. Uh, once I read that book and another published reference by the late Donald Kehoe, another well-known UFO researcher, I began to actively seek out and interview U.S. Air Force veterans who might have a knowledge of these kinds of incidents. At this point in time, I have over 150 sources. These are former nuclear missile launch officers, targeting officers, missile maintenance personnel, missile security guards, other U.S. military veterans with a knowledge of UFO incidents at other types of nuclear weapons facilities, such as storage sites. All of these individuals are emphatic that UFOs have long monitored and even interfered with the functionality of U.S. nuclear weapons. Quite evidently, this is an important subject. I think the public has a right to know the facts, and I have therefore spent as much time as possible since the early 1970s attempting to gather, collate, and present this information to the public. My book, UFOs and Nukes, Extraordinary Encounters at Nuclear Weapons Sites, was published in 2008. It contains the testimony of more than 100 U.S. military veterans regarding UFO incursions at American nuclear weapons sites. My recently completed film, UFOs and Nukes, The Secret Link Revealed, will be presented at the MUFON Symposium in Orlando. I think it is uh, quite convincing. The feedback that I've gotten over the three months that it's been available online is uniformly favorable. This, in effect, has become my life's work, for better or worse. I have long referred to myself as simply being the messenger. Uh, the U.S. military veterans are the heroes in this story. I am simply conveying their message to the public. I have repeatedly said that these individuals were entrusted by the U.S. government to initiate World War III, literally, by turning keys and launching missiles which would have resulted in millions of Soviet citizens dying in a nuclear holocaust if it had come to that. And now, these same trusted persons, the persons who were entrusted with these tremendously important responsibilities, have now come forward in large numbers and said that UFOs have long monitored and even tampered with American nuclear weapons. I believe this message is worthy of public attention. I will be attempting once again at the upcoming symposium to present my best case for UFO activity at nuclear weapons sites.